First of all, every human being struggles with moments of imposter syndrome where you enter a situation and in your own mind, you start doubting yourself and you start feeling worried that people are going to find out that you have no idea what you're talking about. The situation that you found yourself in on Friday morning just a few days ago is not only so relatable, and I know that you have a lot of value to share. Why don't we unpack this moment where your imposter syndrome got triggered? Hey, it's your friend Mel, and welcome to the Mel Robbins Podcast. Today, we are going to get right into it. We're going to talk about imposter syndrome, and the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because... Our daughter, Kendall, who is 23 years old, just had a situation this weekend that triggered imposter syndrome. And I thought, why don't we unpack this moment where your imposter syndrome got triggered? And then more importantly, the incredible things that you shared with me that helped you turn it around. So ladies and gentlemen, everybody who's listening, Kendall Robbins. Hey, everybody. All right. So tell us what happened. Okay. So... This past weekend, I had my first experience as an artist in the real artist world is what I'm going to call it. What does artist mean? I am pursuing a career as a professional recording and touring artist, and I'm a singer-songwriter. I've started to write my own music. I'm moving out to LA in a few weeks' time, and this past weekend was my first experience surrounded by people that are really successful artists that have are doing the thing that I want to do. Um, and as somebody that's been in school for the past four years, I've had very few experiences like this. And so this past weekend was my first few days fully existing in that world without the label of a student on my back. I didn't have that sort of shadow to hide in anymore. Mm-hmm. I was feeling embarrassed. I was feeling awkward. I was feeling like an imposter. Like I don't belong because I don't have music out and I don't have uh, fans and I don't have a social media following, but I was just me. Okay. Well, let's just back the truck up a minute. So let's just set the table. First of all, every human being struggles with moments of imposter syndrome. I'm looking at the research right here, everybody. I've got my research. Psychologists call this fear of being found out imposter syndrome. It was coined in the 1970s by two female researchers. In fact, Harvard Business Review, Kendall, says that executives worldwide agree that their number one fear is being found to be incompetent. Oh, okay. So this is a very normal thing for everybody to experience, and it is what is called intellectual self-doubt where you enter a situation or you enter a room or you think about doing something and in your own mind, you start doubting yourself. You start doubting whether or not you're able to do something. Mm -hmm. You start Mm -hmm. doubting whether or not you deserve to be in a certain place and you start feeling worried that people are going to find out that you have no idea what you're talking about. And one thing that I will say from the get-go is the reason why I wanted to have you on is because the situation that you found yourself in on Friday morning just a few days ago is not only so relatable, but I was pretty impressed by how you coached yourself through it and turned it around and had one of the coolest, most affirming weekends of your life. And I know that you have a lot of value to share. So... With that, are you willing to go there? Yes, I am willing. Okay, great. So just put us at the scene. What was happening Friday morning? So this past weekend, I was lucky enough to go to a music festival and I had an artist pass, which means that I got to watch all of the musicians and artists that were performing at the festival perform from backstage in this separate area that the people with the artist pass can hang out in. And I didn't really know what that meant until I got there. <laughs> and, and so I had no, I meant? honestly had no idea what artist pass meant. I was just like, sweet. Okay. I get to cut the line. That's really awesome. I feel really grateful. And then I walk backstage and I'm surrounded by all of these like very established musicians and artists and performers and people that I've been listening to for the past however many years. What was that like? I mean, it was 
it was really scary at first because I had no idea that I was going to be within arm's reach of all these people that I've looked up to for the past few years. And being there as somebody that has just gotten out of school, does not have anything released, is just in the woods right now figuring out what I who I want to be, what I want to be, what I want to write, what I want to release. I'm just, I, I, I basically don't exist right now in the world that I'm stepping into. Mm. And so stepping into this festival as somebody that doesn't really exist online or in this industry yet, but stepping into it physically and being surrounded by all these people was just incredibly daunting. And I felt really scared and awkward and stood, al- I, 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 I stood alone a lot of the time. So can you put us at the moment when you arrive at the festival you get this pass that is a special thing around your wrist that gives you all access to go anywhere and you walk into almost like the tent that serves as the green yeah okay 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 so I have a family friend that works at this festival and has been going to this festival for a while so he was the one that was actually able to get me the artist pass I had honestly no idea what it really meant I knew that there were some VIP features of this pass but I did not know what my days were going to look like I didn't know what the schedule was like and so basically we get to the festival we cut the line we go to this special tent where I get this wristband and then we walk into the festival immediately we're in this crowd I'm seeing all the food tents smelling all the smells seeing all the people and then we go behind the stage into this roped off section Meanwhile, the family friend that I am with is sort of showing me the ropes, but of course he's very busy and has things to be doing at the festival. We go behind this rope and there's this hangout area in the roped off section under a tent. And he said, this is sort of the hangout spot. Okay, I got to go now. (laughs) Okay. And I was like, okay. So I'm 30 minutes in, I'm wearing a long skirt and it's 85 degrees outside, which automatically I'm a rookie. And he says, okay, this is sort of the hangout spot. This is sort of our touch point. We can meet here. There's not a lot of service at the festival. So if in you terms ever, of cell service, cell service, there's no service at this, at the festival. So if you need to find me, we'll just meet at this tent. I'm like, okay, sweet. I walk into the tent. I'm like, okay, free food, free drinks. This pass is freaking awesome. Right. And then I start to recognize the people standing under the tent. I mean, not every single person, but there were some very established artists and I start to recognize a lot of artists whose music I have been listening to for years now whose name I have seen on the lineup for the festival who are now standing in front of me in the free food line and so I'm thinking oh my god okay this tent is where all the artists and performers hang out and because I have this pass that says artist pass (laughs) I am also allowed to be in this tent so I'm I'm putting the pieces together slowly And I'm just like, why am I here? I should not be here. I should be out in that audience with people. I, I'm not performing. I'm not part of a band. I'm here on a family connection. I just feel like, why am I here? This is so awkward. Not to mention I'm alone. So you can imagine that the imposter syndrome was even grander than if you're with somebody that you can bond with it over. But did you go up to anybody? No. So Basically, I walk into this tent and I see all these people that I've been following and I put the pieces together and realize, oh my God, this artist pass on my wrist that says artist means that I have access to everything the performers do, which immediately makes me want to rip the thing off my arm and go stand in the audience because Mm. I'm not performing. I'm not on the industry side. I'm not a musician. I mean, I'm not a musician performing with anyone. I'm just here as Kendall. And like I said before, doesn't really exist in this industry world yet. What do you mean by that? You don't exist? I don't, I don't have any, I don't have anything out to, I feel imposter syndrome talking about the fact that I don't have music out yet on Spotify. I hate talking about it. I, it makes me want to throw up everywhere. It makes me so embarrassed. Why? Because everybody else seems to have it figured out and have shit going on. I, I know that when, I am not in an anxious state of mind. I, I remind myself, you know, I'm on my own timeline. I don't really want you to include that. No, but I think that's important because it's a, it, it ties into what I was going to share with you. Please say that. 
Okay. I feel very embarrassed to share with my mom's millions and millions and millions of followers and listeners that I don't have anything out on any streaming platform yet. I don't have a social media presence. I don't have fans. I don't have anything. And I'm talking about being an imposter on this podcast when I've never been on tour. I don't have an album out. I don't have followers. I don't have fans. I feel like an imposter for being an imposter. I have imposter syndrome about doing this episode because I feel like I haven't been an imposter for long enough to talk about being an imposter. What does that even mean? This is just such a classic example of the syndrome, which is I I feel as though I haven't, this feeling is so new to me that it feels like I don't even have enough qualification to talk about it. Oh, so. Do you know what I mean? You don't feel like you're an authority on how to deal with imposter yeah. syndrome because you struggle with it. I feel like I don't I don't feel like I had my first real experience this past weekend dealing with imposter syndrome and I definitely learned from it. I definitely gained a lot of insight from the experience, but it was my first experience and I feel unqualified to talk about it because it was my first experience. You're not really selling the episode. I'm trying to make a joke. I do feel like an imposter right now. Because I feel like all of the other people in my industry have experienced this so much more than I have. And now I'm getting on here and getting on my soapbox and trying to tell everybody what it's like. You're not getting on your soapbox. But this is why this conversation is so important. You're in it. Yeah. Everybody listening feels like an imposter in some area of their life. Everybody can relate to that feeling like, here I am. I am physically next to the people who are doing what I want to do. And it's so close, I can reach out and touch it. These people I've admired, I've streamed, I've watched them at award shows, they're standing right there, they're doing what I want to do. And the only thing that's keeping me from doing what I want to do is this feeling of not being ready or this feeling that I'm not going to have what it takes, this feeling of being a nobody, this feeling like somebody's already done it, this feeling like, is there room for me? And because you're in it, you are in a much better place to validate where everybody is, Ken. Like somebody's already figured this shit out coming in and being like, well, when you feel like an imposter, do this, this, and this. Yeah. It's easy when you're through it. You're right up against it right now. That tension that you feel is important. I remember, God, this must have been like nine years ago when I first got into the speaking business, Ken. I hadn't been paid to give a speech and I get invited as I'm just starting out to go to this event in California and speak on a panel. I don't even know what the hell I was speaking about. All I know is there was this opening reception, okay, sort of like what you're describing, an opening reception for the people who had been invited to speak at this thing. And so like you, I walk into this room, I have the lanyard around my neck, you've got the little artist thing around your wrist, and I walk in and I am like, oh my God, there's Christy Turlington, the supermodel. Oh my gosh, there's uh, Gretchen Rubin, the author. Oh my gosh, there's this person, there's that person. there, And I see all these famous people, all of whom are speaking. I felt like I had no business being there. Yeah, same. And all these people were talking and they all seemed to know each other. And there were a couple instances where I'm like, okay, here we go. And I would walk up to a group of people and I'd introduce myself and they'd all turn. Oh, what do you do? And I didn't even know how to answer it because I didn't have a book. I had given one TEDx talk and nobody had heard of it yet. I didn't have anything. I felt like I had nothing. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know why I was there. Yeah. And after I would introduce myself and people were like, oh, did you write a book? And I'm like, no, uh, I'm just kind of speaking about uh, motivation. Oh, okay. And then they turn. And something flipped in me because I felt like such a fraud being there, but something deeper was going on. And this is what was going on. I realized in that moment that I wanted to do something that mattered. I wanted to do the work or write a book 
or do something that when I walked into a room, it was like, oh, oh, you're the woman who wrote the five second rule. I freaking love that thing. And that like discomfort that I felt in that moment, it sucked in the moment. I went back to my hotel room. I didn't go to the dinner. I cried. I stayed up all night. What am I going to do? But there was something deep inside of me that was like, you don't want to feel this way. You have something that you want to contribute. And feeling like you're on the outside of something that you want to be a part of is a normal experience. See, I think imposter syndrome, that discomfort that you were feeling that first few hours at the artist tent at this music festival, I think that is your dreams going, we got work to do. Oh shit. Like we got, we like, you want to be in here? You want to be doing this? You, you got stuff to contribute. You got to wake up. Like you got to start putting yourself out there. Like this is a step on the path. That's so important because you only feel imposter syndrome in situations that you care about because you care about whether or not you've got something to show for what you're doing. Well, like I said, I was alone and all of these very established famous <laughs> artists are walking by me. And it's not like I can be introducing myself to people and saying, oh, go check me out on Spotify. Go check me out on Instagram. It's like, hi, I'm Kendall. And then, I'm dis and then I disappear. <laughs> To the point where someone literally came up to me and was like, are you okay? Like, definitely knew. I looked like I was not supposed to be there. That's how, like, the imposter syndrome had basically creeped onto my face. I was so uncomfortable and so just, like, embarrassed and just felt like, why am I here? I need to leave. I don't want to be here. I want to go home. I don't. I don't want to tell people I'm an artist. I don't feel like that at all right now. I don't feel like anyone's going to give a shit about me, including myself. <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, it was horrible. It was, it was really horrible. But I mean, what changed though? Because this is where I want to go to. We can well, all, well, hold that thought. I want to hear a quick word from our sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to go right to the moment where you flip the switch because you did. And you made it one of the best weekends of your life. And you made incredible friendships. And you came home a different person after those three days. And we're going to talk about what changed when we come back. Welcome back. I'm Mel Robbins. And I'm sitting here with our daughter, Kendall, who's 23. And she is pursuing her uh, dream and goal of being a touring uh, singer-songwriter. And we're talking about imposter syndrome. And so, Ken, I want to go back to the moment where you've been standing in the artist tent at this music festival for the first five hours on day one. Somebody has come up to you and said, are you OK? Because you look so out of place and you're alone drinking a White Claw, s surrounded by all these touring musicians that you admire. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> How did you what did you do to turn this around? Because you turned it around, dude. Well, I definitely, it definitely was not immediate. It, it continued for about a few more hours. So in Just that, tell me about it, yeah. in that tent, oh God, and I'm slightly tipsy now because I've had two white claws alone <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting alone let me just tell you every single person in that tent was with another person if not three or four so you can tell that I probably look so weird sitting alone and I was just kind of thinking you know I I'm here I get to be around some of my biggest inspirations I get to go backstage and be an arm's length from them while they absolutely murder it on stage I get free food. I get free white claws. <laughs> Why the fuck wouldn't I enjoy this? You know, like I'm just going to enjoy this because no, I'm not performing, although I wish that I was. No, I don't have a Grammy, although that is a dream of mine. No, I don't have music out on Spotify that I can tell my favorite artists that are here to listen to. No, I can't do any of that. But you know what? I can be grateful that I'm here. And I can lean into that gratitude and just have fun. So once I exhaled and I was like, okay, 
I'm going to enjoy myself. This has been <laughs> God awful up until this <laughs> point. So there's, grateful for the God awful. There's, there's, I mean, it, why not? Why not have fun? You know, it, it, I'm either going to continue to torture myself in front of my favorite artists or I'm going to have fun and put a smile on my face. So I said, you know what? I'm really happy that I'm here. Let's start to have some fun. And as I'm sitting alone, drinking a water this time, I'm thinking about all of this advice that I've gotten over the past years and like, what are other things I can lean into while being here to try and find some sense of a b- belonging in a place that I feel I don't belong. Yeah. And I think back to this piece of advice that one of my amazing mentors, Sean Holt, who is the vice dean at the Thornton School of Music at USC, gave to me. And he said, you know, because you're a beginner, Kendall, these rooms that you're going to start to walk into and these experiences that you're going to start to have, you can't be walking in there with some massive ego and some big head on your shoulders thinking, you know, I know best. I know this. That's not the way to go about mm-hmm. this is to fi- is to be like, I know everything. Mm-hmm. But instead, you should walk into those rooms with a learner's posture and lean into the gratitude that you have for learning all that you're going to learn. And he said, every room that you walk into, enter with a learner's posture, but also know in the back of your mind that you have something to give Mm. to the people in that room that they don't have and that you might not even know you have to give, but there's a reason you're in that room and you're going to give them something that they don't know they needed, just like they're going to give you something you don't know you needed mic drop thank you sean can i just stop there yeah i wish i had known that when i walked into the room in los angeles because i walked in there and i felt like oh my god these are people i admire or i they're famous or they're known or they're doing cool things i'm not doing anything i'm a nobody i don't have anything yet and yet that's the important part yet It's not that you can't do it. It's that you haven't done it yet. But if I had been able to flip to a state of, I'm just so grateful to be here and I am going to introduce myself to everybody and I am going to learn as much as I can and I'm going to soak things up and I'm going to be like a beginner. If you were in my shoes, what's one piece of advice you would have? Like just soak it all up and in. And I, I like it would have flipped off the insecurity that imposter syndrome can overwhelm you with. Because when you get up in your head and you start going, I don't belong, and and you become very intellectual about it, you isolate yourself. And you cut yourself off from both what you can get and gain from the room and what you can give. Mm -hmm. Because every time you talk to somebody who is beginning at something you're really good at, their enthusiasm and passion always rubs off on you. Yeah. And so it's true. I was told that. What do you mean? I mean, so a lot of things happened, but I just started to relax into it and I started to meet people. How did you meet them? Well, the family connection that I had who invited me to the festival had a few friends there and he introduced me to those people who I really hit it off with and we started talking and it was the first time that I was talking to people, (laughs) but it was the first time that I was able to just own where I was at and say I'm an artist I'm a beginner I don't have anything out I'm just in my creative curative space right now I'm working on some stuff I'm really excited about it I'm not trying to rush the rush the process and I think saying that and just speaking that out into the universe was sort of a weight lifted but just being able to meet people and and tell them that I'm a beginner and that I'm so excited and that I'm so grateful to learn from them and to be just surrounded by the greats and all these people that I've just Mm. been so inspired by for the past few years was enough, you know? What happened? Well, they were so nice and they welcomed me in and they put, took me under their wing and introduced me to a bunch of cool people and, and nobody was quick to judge me that I was a beginner. And I had a few people even say, you know, it's so inspiring being around you because we we now have to make ends meet by doing this and we pay our bills doing this but it's so cool to be surrounded by someone that's just so fresh off and ready to go and it Mm. reminds us all of the reason that we started which is because we fell in love with it and like we can feel that love coming off of you and it just reminds us of why we do this because some days it gets long and it gets hard and we don't want to do it and it's hard to be so in love with the thing that also pays your bills, but it's so nice being around you and being around somebody that's just so excited about it. And that was just so validating because 
they weren't complimenting my original music, but they were just complimenting my spirit and my ambition and my drive and my passion, which is like what I needed to be complimented on at this phase in my journey. It's actually more important than being complimented on. The music. Yeah. Always. And so and so I made a bunch of friends and I even got the chance to perform at this um, late night performance. And after I performed, I had a bunch of people ask if they wanted to collaborate with me and write music with me. And it, it was just really awesome. I think once I sort of owned where I'm at, which is mm. a beginner, I'm not an imposter as a beginner, <sighs> you know, because that's what I am. Wait, say that again. I'm not an imposter if I'm a beginner because that's what I am. Oh, my God. <laughs> Kendall, that's genius. Well, I think it's you can diffuse the imposter syndrome if you just accept where you're at. I felt like an imposter around all of my favorite artists because of what they have accomplished that I haven't yet. But if I just give myself the space to meet me where I'm at. Yeah then the imposter syndrome sort of disappears. Does That's that make sense? It not only makes sense, but I have so many like ahas and light bulbs blinking. It's like a galaxy mm. in my mind. Okay. You're not an imposter. You're just a beginner. Yes. And what I also love about those moments where you're new to something, you're learning, you're in a new job. If you start at a new school, you feel like an imposter that everybody always has friends. When you move to a new neighborhood, when you try something new. And I think so many of us are so terrified of feeling like a beginner or feeling mediocre at something that we don't give ourselves permission to just be a beginner. Because we think people are going to like us more if we have it all figured out. No, and the truth is nobody has not. it figured out completely. No. The people that you admire are tired of touring. And so the passion and the beginner's mindset infuses them with something. And I have so many takeaways from this conversation, Ken. I knew that I would. Number one, the next time that you're in a situation where you feel like you don't belong or you get up in your head, recognize it and flip it to gratitude. Be grateful that you are here at this new school or you're here in this new job or you are here in a room with people that you admire. Adopt that learner's beginner's mindset and just absorb as much as you can. Another thing that you said that I think is brilliant is that as soon as you gave yourself grace to just be where you are and to say it out loud, well, I have something to say about that. Okay. Another way to think about it, and this is another piece of advice that I got from Sean Holt, is that you become one of the most powerful people in the room when you beat everybody to your inconvenient truths. What does that mean? It means if you're a beginner and you don't have music out on Spotify, just say it. And just say, <laughs> you know, I'm feeling pretty embarrassed and feeling a little bit out of place say I love that instead of trying to pretend like you have it all figured out when you walk into this room just beat everybody to your inconvenient truths it's inconvenient that I don't have music out it's inconvenient that I haven't gone on tour it's in it feels inconvenient that I don't have fans or a social media following and so instead of pretending like I have it all figured out and I'm sitting in this room I'm just going to be honest and I'm just going to be vulnerable because mm. If you come from a place of vulnerability, you're definitely going to make connection. What happened the first time you said s to somebody in that artist tent, well, I haven't released any music yet? Well, let me talk about how it felt to say that. Yes. Because it was horrible. Okay, so say it. I mean, the first time that I kind of recognized that I was a beginner and was able to say it out loud was when I would be talking to people. And then of course the question comes, well, do you have any music out? And my jaw would lock and I somehow spit out no and said, I just graduated from school. I'm working on some music now. I'm trying to figure out who I am, 
what I want to sound like, what I want to say, and I'm not there yet. And I'm really excited for the process. But no, I don't have music out. I don't have an Instagram page with anything to look at, at least. I don't have fans. I don't have any of it. I don't have TikTok. You know, I don't have it. And it's definitely scary being around everybody here that not only has that, but has gone around the country mm. showing people. But I'm a beginner and I'm excited and I'm so happy that I get to be here around all of you who are people that I've looked up to for however long. And yeah, I'm just really excited. And, you know, I was met with so much. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. You should take your time. You're so young. You have all the time in the world. Just things that I've been told for so long, but hearing it from these people that I've been so inspired by for so long was so validating. Mm. You have to be bad at something before you're good at it. And people are so afraid of being not so great at something that they don't even try. Yeah. And they're embarrassed to admit that they're at the beginning of trying. Yeah. And also every single person that I, in, in that tent has probably had an experience like mine. Of course. And you know what I also find interesting is that you call yourself a beginner, but you just graduated from the top program in the world for pop music at USC Thornton studying with Grammy award winning artists and collaborating with plenty of musicians you're not exactly a beginner but you're a beginner on the journey of the touring artist world and so I think that there are levels to that beginner mindset because when I started this podcast I was not a beginner when it comes to audio I hosted a radio show in 2008 to 2000, you know, like for years and won awards for it. And then I've published all these audiobooks with Audible, but I felt like a beginner that had never done a podcast. Yeah. When I no, started this. No, I'm not this. a beginner singer. I am a beginner songwriter. Yes. I am a beginner in an artist tent. I am yes. a beginner talking to my favorite artists. I am a beginner waiting in line behind my favorite musicians like I I am uh, there are so many things that I have mm. I mean it, it all ties back into the there's something to learn and there's something to give you can't yes. it's push and pull but it's mostly balance I think if you're only on I have something to give you're gonna get too caught up in your own world and you're not going to be able to feel into the gratitude and the service and you're going to be too like obsessed with yourself what do I give what do I give what do I give it's all about me it's all about me and it's not but, and then if you get in, into the, what do I have to learn? What do I have to learn? What do I have to learn? You're just going to dumb yourself down so much that you don't even give yourself the opportunity mm. to express what you do have to give. And so it, it's practice. And I definitely have not figured it out, although it, it, it sort of maybe on this podcast sounds like I have, but the balance thing, I it's an everyday practice. But well, one thing I want to point out based on what you told me is that the first thing that you gave is your sense of humor. Yeah. It had nothing to do with music. And so you started cracking jokes with somebody that you were introduced to that is highly regarded. And it was your humor and your passion and your beginner mindset that that broke the ice. Yeah. And had you make this incredible connection with somebody who will probably be part of your career moving forward. Yeah. And I, I think another thing way that I think about imposter syndrome is I think about the fact that I'm a nobody. That's mm. kind of, that's kind of what I was feeling. I was literally texting my friends who I graduated with at USC who are incredible musicians and have music out and are just my best friends. And I was texting them being like, I'm a nobody. <laughs> Why am I here? So-and-so just walked by. I'm drinking alone. Help me. And they were all responding like, you're Kendall effing Robbins. You're not a nobody. Like, go be you. Go have fun. You're supposed to be there. Love you guys. You know who you are. And I think I, I think in in saying, like, I'm a nobody, the only reason that I was thinking everybody around me was were somebody's is because of the accolades and the accomplishments that they've mm, achieved. And the but, followings. Yeah, and, and the, the followings. But, like, the fans, at least in my opinion, the fans, the awards, the accolades – the attention that all of the people I was surrounded by have are not who they are. Mm. But as I was thinking about this, I was going, you know, 
so and so is not her Grammy. She's mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. I don't have music out right now, but I'm still me and I can still be me. And at mm. the end of the day, we're all kind of nobodies because people think we're somebody's when we have stuff to show, mm. but without that stuff, we're just us, which is, I mean, the beauty of life. We're all just us. You know, what's interesting is that you just said people think you're somebody because you have some something to show for yourself but we're all just nobodies because there is something that is special about you that nobody else has yeah that's a great way of thinking about it and I think the word nobody is it's so negative and people think oh I'm invisible but like we're all kind of just doing our own thing because I don't have music out because I don't have these awards because I don't have this this following that everyone around me has I'm like you know what all I can do is just be me And that's kind of all that I'm going to do throughout my career. And so I'm just going to do that right now because I hope that even when I do have those accolades and when I do have those fans, I can still be me. And I'm sure that all these people around me at some capacity are just trying to be themselves too. So in doing that, I think I learned and I hope you guys can learn that in just being me, the things that I started to give had nothing to do with my music and nothing to do with my voice and nothing to do with anything that I thought it would have to do with it. it, The things that you are going to give in these rooms that you walk into where you feel like an imposter will likely have nothing to do with that actual career or the skill set you mastered in college to get the job that you got. It's probably going to have to do with your humanity or some experience you had that's relatable or your sense of humor or the fact that you're passionate about sewing. I don't know. Like who who knows what it's going to be. But I think what I learned this past weekend is that people were people felt a magnetic pull towards me because of my humor and because of my inappropriate jokes that <laughs> really, <laughs> I guess, brought some some laughter to the rooms that I was walking into and in giving people comedic relief and giving people laughter they that's what they learned from me and Mm. in turn I started learning from them and the doors all open yep and like lean into you in those rooms just be you recognize you're a beginner beat people to your inconvenient truths be honest by telling them just be you and I think if you're you you're gonna give and you will also receive if I was trying to be somebody that had all these awards or had a TikTok following or whatever it may be I wouldn't be Kendall right and I was Kendall and she had a great weekend. I made a bunch of friends. I ate good food. I saw old friends. I made new friends. One of the things that will beat imposter syndrome is when you start to also tell yourself that there's a reason I'm here. Mm, we didn't talk about this enough, I don't think. Okay, well, we there's a reason why I'm here. You don't have to be like, I deserve to be in this room. Grab faith. Mm. You're in the room for a reason, and you might not know why, but have faith that there is a reason for you to be in that room. There's something for you to learn. There's something for you to give, and that's why you're there. Yeah. Because I see this a lot, and when you tell yourself that you have faith that there's a reason why you're sitting in this room, there's a reason why you're near these people, there's a reason why you're at this school, And if you can't muster up the belief that you deserve to be, anchor yourself in that there's something for you to learn, there's a lesson, there's something for you to discover about yourself. Because when I look back at my experience nine years ago and I was in that room with all those people I admired, all these famous people, and I felt so unworthy, there was a reason I was supposed to be there. It helped me discover that discomfort that I felt that I don't want to feel like this in rooms like this. I want to feel like something, I've, I'm somebody who's contributed something mm. that's important. That's what started to motivate me. That's what got me to accept and confront the fact that I really wanted to be a person that had published a book. Now, I didn't publish it in the next year. I showed up in rooms for the next two, three years, Ken, still feeling like an imposter. I'm sure it never goes away. 
it it does. There are new levels to it. Like when I met Alex Cooper and was on her show, Call Her Daddy, and I was in awe of her, the number one female ranked podcaster in the world, and I hadn't even launched my podcast yet. Mm. You know what? Just absorbed everything I could learn from her, and I learned a lot. She's amazing. So there are going to be moments where you feel that because you're going to be a beginner again. But if you really embrace what Ken and I are sharing with you, you don't have to destroy yourself. You can immediately catch yourself and flip it into a learning opportunity and a gratitude moment and reminding yourself that, wow, I, I, I have faith that I'm here right now because there is something I'm meant to learn by doing this right now. So I'm not going to get it right. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm going to be me and I'm going to learn. And that has so helped me. And I think it'll help you listening right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the thing you also said about the fact that imposter syndrome, I think, comes from a place of, well, I really want this to feel like me. I really the only reason that you're feeling that that imposter syndrome is because you want to not feel like an imposter in those rooms. You want to be a badass yes, in all those rooms. Yes, it's a good rooms. thing. It's a good thing. It's telling you, it's like a, it's kind of like your mental compass going like, yeah, this is what you want. It's There's a work reminder. To do. There's a work to do. I mean, I don't like, I don't feel imposter syndrome when I go to like a financial convention because I don't <laughs> <laughs> know anything about that. And, and I, I don't, don't want to. And I don't have a passion to. I That's don't, I don't desire point. to. I'm not like, oh my God, I'm never going to make it in this. I'm like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in this room. I want to be in a different room, but it's the rooms that you want to be in that you're like, oh fuck, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. I don't, it, it tests everything. It makes you look in the mirror. It, it kind of like shines a light on the things you don't know about what you're so obsessed with and makes you like want them. And that scares the shit out of you. Yeah. No, I think it, I think it's true. I think it comes back to the idea that some days you're going to be a beginner in the room. Some days you're going to be the expert. If you find yourself in that room or that tent or backstage mm. or in that workout class, wherever you are and you start to feel that creeping up, I shouldn't be here. I don't belong here. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Just trust that you're supposed to be there and that Mm -hmm. there's a reason that you're there and take on your learner's posture. If you feel like you don't know anything and everybody else does, then just get really grateful and really excited to learn from the other people and don't leave the room. Don't leave that room. Boom. Cheers. Cheers. And in case no one else tells you, Kendall and I are going to tell you, we love you. We love you. And I believe in your ability to create a life that you want and to do the work. Mm -hmm. Don't leave the room. I'll talk to you in a few days. (laughs) Hold hold the phone. That would be... The loudest ice machine you've ever heard. Okay, there it goes. Chris? Dad, we're recording! I don't want to, like, say, like... Chris! Dad! <laughs> We're filming and recording. <laughs> so you can't be here. Uh, quiet, quiet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, be quiet because I just had a moment and you ruined it. Anyway. Fuck, I had a really good superpower. No, 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 no. We were thinking about, we were talking, what else were we talking about? Imposter syndrome, nobodies. Oh, oh, oh. Hang on, mom. <sighs> No, I'm just looking to make sure I had hit record. Oh, and one more thing. And no, this is not a blooper. (laughs) This is the legal language. You know, what the lawyers write and what I need to read to you. This podcast is presented solely for educational and entertainment purposes. I'm just your friend. I am not a licensed therapist. And this podcast is not intended as a substitute for the advice of a physician, professional coach, psychotherapist, or other qualified professional. Got it? Good. I'll see you in the next episode. YouTube, how are you? Um, If you loved this episode, go right here because this is an episode that's going to help you get clear about what you want. 
because I'm sure as you listen to this, you're like, but I don't know what I want. I don't know what room I should be in. Uh, listen to this and you will. Mwah.